Okay, well, uh, here we go. This is the one that I, uh, had. I hope you like the, uh, the funny music there. This is the, uh, this is the one that I, uh, neglected to turn the mixer on for, so I do not have the original sound from this match, so instead you're going to hear the wonderful sounds of a random free crap downloaded off the YouTube website for inclusion in one's videos. Um, yes, we've got a few favorites here. I think, uh, you're listening to, uh, to Bach there, and there might be a might be a Chopin thing dr thrown in there, and maybe some weird uh, science fiction type effects that somebody put together on their in their basement on a synthesizer, I think. And nah, it's not the same, but it's the best I got for this one. I was lucky enough to get some really good matches uh, this week, which I'll try to post after this one. But this one is last week. I think it's uh, Saturday night, probably. Would that have been? What's the day? The 4th? Sunday the 4th. Saturday the 3rd. Uh, so this would be late December. Last week of December here. And this is a terrible, terrible loss. Which I get quite a few of actually. They've been having some fairly uneven teams on these things lately, but it's it's, it's difficult to get e difficult to get even teams as the as the uh, as the greatest game in the world here continues to slowly die. We do get new players from time to time, but obviously it takes time for them to learn how to play the game. And you know, if you've been playing this game for years, like a lot, like a lot of these people have been, you know, it may seem like it's really simple and everything like that. But you know how it is when you get on some game you've never played before. You don't know what the hell's going on. I mean, like Flood here. I mean, these a lot of these people have played this map about oh, about a million times. They know every possible angle in these maps, even though they even though they still surprise you sometimes and come up with different things to do. That's a really good spot to sit the, to sit the walker in, by the way. Unless, you're, unless your prime goes down. If your prime goes down, you need to back the hell up well, before you lose the walker, which I'm about to do. Okay, we got the prime back up, so I'm going to try to advance again, but I'm going to lose this walker pretty quickly because there's a nemesis right over there, and this walker is very weak. You got Rocky Mountain out there because uh, this, yeah, that's it. Because that sniper up on the roof is one of the main reasons I get the walker out there. Just to, just to hold him down long enough for get long long enough for us to get an orb out there to the center. The nemesis is not hard to take down with a with a flat cannon. You just have to get right up on top of him where he can't quite get at you with that gun of his. And we're just trying to hold on to our prime and not doing a very good job of it. Yeah. Pretty good match, so we do generally get some. Oh God! I have to say my aim has just been really terrible lately. I don't understand. I, you know, it's. I start I start screwing around with the settings on the mouse, trying to improve it and shit, and I only make it worse. And then it gets and then it becomes hard to find how I had it set before. And and ah, uh, you know, my reflexes just slowly continue to deteriorate and. Um, yeah, I just, I just never had I just never had the best motor control in the world anyway, so it's tough for me. I went out and spent about 80 bucks on a new mouse. I got a Logitech G502, I think it is, with a little blue G that lights up on it. And knowing nothing much about, about mice except the fact that I like Logitech mice because they last forever. I think a couple of years ago, I spent like 50 or 60 bucks on one of these Mad Cats mice, which was really stylish. You know, you could, you could, you could adjust it 18 different ways. And it looked really cool, and and you had all kinds of buttons on it and shit, and it was really great. And it worked for about two weeks, and then it stopped working. And never figured out why either. I felt really bad about that because it's a really great mouse. It worked really good when I had it. It just stopped working. And um, I'm not the only person that had that problem with it. And I feel bad for the company because, I, because as far as I can tell, based on what I've read, my guess is that what happened with that mouse is that it was just a matter of uh, bad manufacturing. When they put it together, they were using uh, 
Uh, they were using, they didn't have very good quality control. They were, they were soldering the boards together and they probably didn't use enough solder or they weren't careful enough about how they soldered the components together. And the thing would heat up and uh, little bits of it would start to lose electrical connection, like the optical sensor, for example. And then it would stop working. And, you know, if you let it cool down for a, for a, for a day or two and then plug it back in, it'll work again for about an hour or two. And then it'll start doing the same thing again. So, yeah. Not good for much. I've, I've, handed, I've handed that off to my brother, and he's going to use his technical skills on it, maybe open it up and maybe try to re-solder the connections or something. It might get a useful mouse out of it someday. But I went out and bought this Logitech, because Logitech is Logitech. Logitech mice, they just, they just go forever. And this is actually, you know, they haven't been real fancy, the Logitech mice, for a long time, but the G502 like, seems like it's right up there with all the all the high-tech ones. Although it doesn't really help me all that much, really. I mean, I was never a big mouse kind of guy. I mean, uh, I've been using an MX518 for years and years and years, and I was using it with a 125 polling rate up until a couple of weeks ago, and I suddenly, and I suddenly, and, and one day I read about polling rates, and I said, polling rates? Mice have polling rates? Well, of course they do, yeah. And yours is only 125. Well, that's pretty horrible. And um, I didn't, I hadn't really noticed it because the, the Logitech software didn't say anything about it, you know, even though you're supposed to adjust this kind of thing. And it turns out that the Logitech software uh, got rid of their support for adjustable uh, polling rates on the MX518 about, oh, about, about, about a million years ago. And the only way to get higher than 125 on that mouse is to do some kind of god-awful overclocking uh, thing involving two or three or four different public domain programs. I put all that together and I got it jumped up to about 500, which is good. You know, it's about as good as you're going to get, really. That should have been good enough, but I decided I decided I wanted the latest and greatest with polling rates, which is about a thousand, really. I didn't realize that either. There's some, there's a little, there tends to be a little bit of confusion about the specifications on mice. You know, you see these mice, you know, that advertise 12,000 DPI, you know. Uh, what, they, what they don't tell you, and what becomes apparent after you start trying to use these things, is that your 12,000 DPI for most people is, uh, is basically useless unless you've got like... Uh, Unless you've got like a screen with a huge ass resolution on it, you know, like one of those 4K, if you're gaming with a 4K monitor or something like that, which I don't think anybody actually does, I mean, I suppose you could, but if you did, uh, maybe a 12,000 DPI might be sort of useful in that case, you know, because 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 you'd have to you'd have to chew through a lot of dots to get from one end to the other of that motherfucker to the get your, you know get across that damn thing, but. For your 1920, 1280, or whatever it is you're running, you know, uh, I use about the first quarter of those DPIs, and that's about it, you know. It sits at around, it sits at around 1100 for me most of the time. And that's plenty, you know, I can, if I, that's plenty, you know, and I'll slow it down. You know, I, I've got a setting to slow it down for if I want to aim, although I never even use that feature really, because it's just not worth it. This game moves too fast for that, you know. I'm like, okay, I'm going to stop moving now, and then boom, you're dead. You know, it doesn't work, you know. I mean, although I'm sure people do it. I really should have had that guy. Well, let me suicide on this before I catch an arrow. Okay. So yeah, I mean it's got a thousand it's got a thousand polling rate, which is what the I don't know of any mouse that has any that has anything higher than that, and I really doubt that a higher polling rate would do you any good anyway, but but it's got about 10 or 12 buttons, which is pretty good for one of these mice, you know. There's not too many mice. Most of that seems to be de rigueur, you know, at least 10 or 12 buttons for most of these gaming mice. And it's got all that. And it's got this little, it's got this little do-jigger on it where you, uh, with the software, where, where you can, where you can, you can train it on your surface, you know. So I've got it on my ice mat over here. And, and I turn on the trainer, and I run it across the ice mat for about a minute or two. And says, okay, your mouse is now trained for your surface. You know, well, that's great. So I'm all set, more or less. The only thing I haven't quite figured out at this point is 
okay, I've got the I've got the mouse speed set to six in the driver. Uh, I've got the DPI set up how it should be in the in the software. Now, what am, well, what the hell am I supposed to do with the mouse sensitivity in the game itself? I mean, where does that where does that fit into this picture? I don't know. It's mysterious to me. I think I'm just going to wing that one. Try different settings and see what works best. And uh, yeah, yeah, it does seem to help a little bit. Once I get the, uh, you know, I get the higher DPI going, and I get the, I get the higher uh, polling rate going, and I set the DPIs about where I need them to be, and, and it does help me. It does help me a bit, but still not, still not, still not aiming like I should. And I think at this point, I don't, I don't have any recourse except to say, well, it's just, it's just my lousy reflexes. That's all it is. I was really wanting to get that guy because I knew he had the new. Okay. Well, it's a good looking mouse. It's not as good as lo it's not as good looking as the Mad Cat. I'll give you that one. That Mad Cat was pretty crazy looking. That was like it was like something out of Alien or something. That's, I hope I hope my I hope uh oh I'm, like I said I, was, I didn't really want to take it apart myself because it's it's. I have very little patience for that kind of thing. It takes a long time, you know. I'm afraid I'm gonna break. I'm afraid I'm gonna get impatient and break the damn thing before I find all the screws that hold it together. But you get it apart, it should be possible to go in there with a soldering iron, a little bit of a little fine side, a little bit of fine fine solder, and just just nail everything down and make sure everything's okay. And maybe that'll get it to work. There was at least one guy in the city did that and actually got the thing to work correctly. Okay, we've almost got the whole map here. That's actually amazing. We're, we're almost going to win here. It looks like we're going to win, doesn't it? You know, that's the way some of these matches go. I think we have fun times on our team also. Now, I was playing on here yesterday and playing fun times and ice cream. They were both going, oh, yeah, Dickbird, yeah. If you got Dickbird, you're going to win. You know, like, I'm like, yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'd like to believe that. Yeah, but they're just... Nice of them to nice of them to be so positive, but to be honest, I think Fun Times is the one there that actually that actually uh, kind of decides a lot of these matches. You, you don't necessarily win if you got Fun Times on your match, but he's a huge fucking advantage. He's about the best player out here, actually. We've got a few other really great players that uh, haven't seen a few of them for a while. Bar, haven't seen Bar for a while. There's this guy named Inceptos who's actually quite good, but um, He's, he's really unhappy. He's really unhappy with the uh, well. He's just he's just you know he just gets really negative. And apparently there's a there's an admin that doesn't like him uh, getting on text and just uh, being negative all the time. And so he mutes the guy. So Inceptos don't like that. Ah well. Can't please everybody. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I thought we might make that. Well, let's see. If, no, didn't make that either. Yeah, they were probably should have went the other the other way. It's a uh, that's one of those things you have to look out for. I mean, if you wanna if you wanna if you run through a door and there's somebody there and there's somebody there uh, somebody nails you, you know, and you run back out to avoid getting killed, it's probably not a good idea to run right back in there because he may be waiting for you. Right off, just like they're waiting for me right through here, which I'm sure they are. Let's see if I can live long enough to cap this. Okay, just made it. And got nailed again. That's liquefied, another excellent player. You get these you get these crowded matches like this one and you and that's when and that's when the real and that's when you get the best players showing up. <sighs> And once again, we probably lose this. Oh God, that was pretty terrible. I was probably carrying the orb too. Yeah, we're pushed back to our prime. It's time to get in the walker and become desperate. Yes, indeed. And if you don't have, well, we do have our prime now, so I should move forward. But you know, okay, the, the flood is down too, so that was my other worry. Okay, and the center's down. Okay, so I definitely need to move forward now. I'm hoping to get up into position up on this corner. And the walker can pretty much dominate this whole side of the map from there. 
for as long as it takes the enemy to take him out. But you've got this built, you've got this structure right here for cover. There's a, oh, there's, god damn it, the, the other walker's in, he's in position across there. Well, what I was hoping was to get the position and take out the orb runner, because I seen the orb, well, the orb runner's already made it to center. So that's not, okay, and got took out by the other walker, so that was a waste of time. And we're back to trying to hold our prime. Well, since our prime is being held by the orb, I'm going to go over here. And I could, and well, shooting at the shooting of the flood would be a good idea. Going after the nuke would be a good idea. But by the time I go get the nuke and get back here, that flood's going to start being short. So this is not looking like a good situation. I really need to quit screwing around. I don't think that orb runner is going to make it through here. There's a, there's a sniper on one side. You got people on the other side gunning for him. We got to make the attempt. It's getting too short. We got to take out the order. The blue orb runner. Let's see if we can get him. And he's out. And did we cap? Yes, we did. Okay, so that's that saved us. But you can see we're flirting with disaster here. Losing 20 points right there would have gotten. Well, we still have a lead, but it's de things are definitely not going entirely our way. Okay, we got the center down again. Looks like we're going to try to nail it down because it's got some fire on it. And just about made it up there. If I'm lucky, I need to start moving and quit screwing around here before I get shot. And I'm going to screw it up. Yep. You get in a hurry, you got to make that jump. You got to make that jump up onto that platform pretty quickly. And uh, don't always do it. You usually manage to move in the right direction. It's aiming. It's aim. It's aiming where I just get all haywire. I just don't have the fine motor control for that. I guess just too spastic or something. Sometimes I can kind of get. Sometimes I can kind of get my reflexes calibrated a little bit, and I'll get to the point where I can do pretty well with the rockets or the or the or the flat cannon. You know, just whip it around and just and just have it pointed in exactly the right direction or close enough for a flat cannon anyway. And there's a sniper on the roof of there and the walker on the other side trying to take me out and I'm going to dodge them both uh, but by that time our prime is down so yeah this is what happens and now it's nice of that viper to stand still long enough for me to get three rockets into him and I'm gonna get right back into the walker except Haxer there is gonna take it from me we got 22 seconds on the flood which yeah blue is naturally gonna go cap right now okay so we now have nothing with about two and a half minutes left to go. It's looking very bad. Uh, our lead is to, our lead is uh, pretty much uh, well. We still got a pretty good lead. We need to get our prime back. Well, the prime is down, so that's better than nothing. Let me go ahead. I should probably just cap it. Yeah, maybe I. Well, let me go back and pick it up again. Uh, I didn't want. The, I didn't want the viper. I wanted to get the orb. Well, he'll probably get the orb now. Yeah, the orb, and the orb, there's somebody over there running their interference on the orb. That's not a good thing. And Blue's gonna cap that, unless I can stop him, which I usually can't. This is one, this is one place where I really wish I could aim better, because, uh, there's lots of people that get into this situation, and they will take that orb runner down in about a half a second. I'm usually reduced to try to knock him out with rockets or black or something. That's not a guaranteed thing. Because they usually come in and they know just how to jump. It's not that hard to dodge fire when you're coming in there with the orb. You have to have some pretty coordinated defense in there to stop an orb runner coming in. You get one of these people that's a pretty good sniper or, or a shot combo artist, they'll do it every time. Well, many times. You can dodge a shot combo too if you know which way, if you, know, if you see him coming. Pick this thing up, and of course he's going to turn his fire directly on me. I did get him out, so we can skip the interference for a while. Our or, our uh, our uh, our lead continues to dwindle. I'm going to steal that vehicle. Fortunately, none of our teammates shot it down before I could steal it. Not a really durable vehicle, but it's fun to play with. I'll probably get the shot down right about there. Yeah, had a lot of damage on it already. Orb is covering the prime, which has got fire on. And the blue orb is going to come in. If, if we were probably going to lose our prime again, if we ain't careful. And there's 45 seconds left on the flood, so that's not a good thing. 
take this vehicle over to the flood and try to do some damage with that. I'm kind of warning where the, where the, oh, he's headed for the flood. That's a good thing. I probably should have head on over to the flood, but I want to get this nemesis out. Okay, we got the flood. Thanks to me. And got about three people on foot over here. Didn't manage to keep them busy for very long. Meanwhile, we got all kinds of fire on the prime again, so I need to get back over there. Didn't get any movement on towards the center through all of that either, so that didn't go anywhere. But okay, we lost the we lost the uh, lost the flood again. Picked up the orb, and that's all there is to that. Oh, we were in overtime already, weren't we? Yeah. All right. Do another one in a few days. Have a good.